Good morning. I'm your at-home substitute teacher, Mrs. Figglebottom, and today we are going to be learning about compare and contrast. Are you ready to begin? Good. April Fools! <laughs> this is Cheslock. Okay, so I'm going to take off my April Fools gear and we're going to get started. Today for our um, superhero of the day-ish, we had superhero day, then we had what Mr. Bell did yesterday, and today we're having our dressing up as a older person because that's who we're staying home for, right? So I have a picture of my dad here, okay, and he's somebody who... I am staying home for and making sure I'm quarantined and away from, which is probably a word you've heard a lot, which means to kind of stay away from other people. And we're doing those things to keep the older people safe because they tend to get sick a little bit easier, right? All right. So let's have some fun today. Today we're going to focus on compare and contrast, which means telling how things are alike and how they are different, right? So... We are going to read our story of the week together, and then we're going to do a page about compare and contrast. As you read, good readers know that they have to compare and contrast. Okay, if you don't compare and contrast, you're not really understanding the story. And Mrs. Cheslock's class, I know that I tell you when you're not paying attention or not using your reading strategies, what happens? <clears throat> right? It just comes out. It doesn't stay in your head. You're not understanding what you're reading. So. We are going to read this story today. I'm going to make Miss Jesslock smaller. Ah! And I'm going to make our story bigger. So today we're reading the story called A Center for Everyone. Okay? And in A Center for Everyone, our genre is realistic fiction. That means it didn't happen, but it could. Okay? So you're going to have realistic characters, a realistic setting where the story takes place. And our essential question today is, what suggestions do you have that could improve your community for everyone? So remember, our focus this week is social studies and understanding our community environment and being patriotic, doing good things for our country, right? So that's what we're going to focus on today in a center for everyone. Realistic fiction. All right. Okay. Let's get started. Realistic fiction. Essential question. What suggestions do you have that could improve your community for everyone? A Center for Everyone by Kate DeGoldi. Illustrated by Olga and Alexei Ivanov. Awesome. All right. And I can tell right here, if we did a picture walk, I can see a community here. I can see a little girl with a basketball and a little man or a man right here that has a little bag and he's got groceries. So he must have gone to his local, local grocery store. Um, some people driving around. So this should look familiar to you. And I also see some American flags. How patriotic, right? Hmm, interesting. It looks like this is handwritten. It kind of looks a little bit different than the text. I wonder how this is going to be different than the other stories we've read. June 18th. Today was a beautiful day. Everyone was outside. I dribbled my basketball on the sidewalk. Mr. Moretti walked by and suggested I start a basketball game with my friends. We do not have a basketball court in Anderson, Mr. Moretti, I said. Mr. Moretti thought for a moment and said he could not find a place to teach cooking classes either. Mrs. Santiago overheard and added she needed a place for the board games group to meet. My dad said, this town needs a community center. So if we stop for a moment, let's talk about what happened on this page. What's going on here? Okay. Hmm. Interesting. What is going on on this page? What do we learn? I see here that Mr. Moretti had an idea 
to have a cooking class. And then a little girl wanted to play basketball, but she couldn't because there wasn't a basketball court. And if there's not a basketball court, she can't play basketball. Hmm. And then dad said what? Let's go back in our text on that second page. My dad said, this town needs a community center. Hmm. Might be a good idea. Let's turn the page. After dinner, Dad explained that we could ask the town to build a community center. We must follow a specific process. We can research to learn what those rules are, he said. Process. I see the word process. We must follow a specific process. I'm not really sure what that means, and it is one of our vocabulary words, so let's go ahead and click it. Process. A series of actions that lead to a particular result. The last step in the baking process is to bake the food. Process. Good listening. I made something yesterday. I made some bread and it was a long process. It took me a long time from getting to all the ingredients to being able to eat the bread. So that was the process of making the bread. Being a respectful citizen means that we try to make our country and where we live a better place. Our town government is elected to help us do that, Dad added. And that's something we learned about last week was about if you find a problem in your community, it's patriotic or the right thing to do to try to make it better. And here's another word, the word elected. Our town government is elected. Elected. A form of the verb elect, to select someone for a position by voting. We elected Sandy to be captain of our team. Elected. Elected. And we know because there's ED at the end of that verb elect, it is in the past. Very good. June 29th. Today, we had the first meeting at our house to discuss the Anderson Community Center. Mr. Moretti, Mrs. Santiago, and several neighbors came over too. The first thing we did was plan a public meeting. That way, the whole community can talk about the idea. And what's different at the beginning of each of these pages is the heading here. The heading is not words, it is what. Who can tell me? The heading is not words. It is a date, June 29th. And on June 29th, what did they do? They had the first meeting to discuss the community center. Looks like neighbors were there. Yeah, and the whole community talked about the idea. Let's find out what happens here on the opposite page on July 30th. July 30th. The public meeting at the park went very well. About 350 people attended. The sheriff came. Students and teachers from my school also came. Many people agreed that Anderson could use a community center. There even was a story in the newspaper. My name was in it. Wow. Can anyone go back in their text and find how many people attended the public meeting at the park. If you can find it, just go ahead and say it. Very good. I see right here about 350 people attended. The sheriff came, and it sounds like a lot of people are really interested in having this community center, right? August 13th. Today, my dad and I went to a town council meeting. Mr. Moretti and Mrs. Santiago explained to the council why we need a community center. I spoke too. I said a community center would help young people. Mm -hmm. The town council will meet to talk about our ideas. They need to find out how much it will cost to build a community center. They will decide if the community can pay for it. Hmm. So they need to decide how much it's going to cost to build, right? 
interesting. September 26. Good news! The town council will pay for the community center. We met with the architects to tell them what we would like to have at the center. We gave them ideas we've heard from the community. Wow, so what was great on this page? What did they find out? Go back in your text, in that paragraph. The paragraph is a group of sentences, right? The town council will pay for the community center, and they were so excited about that. So now they get to move on, right? Cause, they get it approved to pay for. Effect, they get to choose what's going to be inside of the center. So everyone from the community gets to help decide. Let's see what happens on this next page. The center must have meeting rooms for activities like Mrs. Santiago's board games group. Mr. Moretti asked that the kitchen have counters and sinks at different heights. He said it was important to be accessible to everyone. Most of all, the community center has to have a gym. Mr. Moretti asked that the kitchen have counters and sinks at different heights. Using another one of your reading strategies, okay, drawing an inference, making a smart guess. Why do you think Mr. Moretti would want sinks and counters at different heights? Why would he want different heights of sinks and counters? What could that mean? The following sentence says he wants it to be accessible to everyone. Let's click this word here. Accessible. Able to be reached. When I stand on the stool, the sink is accessible for me. Accessible. Accessible. Able to be reached or used. So... If you wanted different sinks at different heights, that probably means what? People are different heights. And maybe somebody is disabled and is in a wheelchair and they can't reach a regular size counter. So he's thinking ahead and being kind to everyone. November 2nd. I am upset. Some people have said the center will cost too much money. The town council is going to look at the building plans again. They will think about how they can cut costs. Hmm. So, cause, some people think the center is going to be too much money. And the effect is they have to take a step back and look at everything and see if they can afford it and how they can cut some things out. Dad said we might have to make some compromises. I said I did not know what compromises were. It is when both sides give up a little of what they want, so everyone gets a say, Dad said. Let's look at the word compromises. Compromises. Plural form of compromise. When everyone gives up a little of what they want to settle a disagreement, each of us make compromises to come to an agreement. Compromises. I have seen many of you make compromises at recess time when sharing, uh, sharing things, taking turns. A lot of you have made compromises so many times before. So it looks like these people, the town council, the community, everyone's going to have to make some compromises to get this community center built. It's already February in our story. February 24th. We have agreed to some changes in the building plans. The changes were made to save money and to save trees. Several old oak trees are on the building site. Nobody wanted to cut those down. It doesn't say why, but why do you think they wouldn't want to cut down these old oak trees? I see a squirrel up there. And trees are good to have, right? They give us oxygen, they're beautiful. So I think the community wanted to keep these trees that have been there so long. April 18th. Today, the builders finally started work on the community center. Hundreds of people came to watch. Dad and I stood near the mayor. It was like a big community party. Wow. And I see her with a shovel right there. It looks like she's breaking the ground which is something they do right before they start building something and they have a celebration about it. See a news camera there. Lots of people from the community. 
Many people made speeches, but I think my dad's was the best. This has taken us 10 months and many meetings, he said. However, the people of our caring community have made this community center happen. Later, I stood looking at the building site. My dad asked me what I was thinking. I'm thinking that we made Anderson better, I said, for everyone. And I think that they worked really, really hard to do that, didn't they? Awesome job. Now we have some questions here that we can ask about our story. Now you don't have the opportunity to go back in your text right now. So we're going to go back together. Why does Mr. Moretti want a community center? Why did he want one? Now, maybe I don't really remember who Mr. Moretti is. Let's go back in our text. Hmm, Mr. Moretti, Mr. Moretti. I remember him talking about the different counter heights. Let's go to the beginning. Hmm. Mr. Moretti, he said, she wanted, she told him, this is Mr. Moretti right here, that she wanted a basketball court, right? He said, Mr. Moretti thought for a moment and said he could not find a place to teach cooking classes either. Mrs. Santiago overheard and added she needed a place for the board games group to meet. My dad said, this town needs a community center. Wow, so there's our answer right there, right? Mr. Moretti wanted somewhere he could cook do cooking classes for the community. Absolutely. Let's go back. We're going to answer one more question from this page. We're going to go to the next odd numbered question. Why does the narrator, or the person telling the story, why does the narrator learn what the word compromise means? So the little girl is the one telling the story here. Why does she learn what the word compromise means? Let's go back. Find the word compromise. Here we go. Why does she learn? Dad said we might have to make some compromises. And her dad tells her it is when both sides give up a little of what they want so everyone gets a say. Why did she have to learn this though? Let's go back to that previous page. At the top it says November 2nd. Go ahead and reread this page. November 2nd. I am upset. Some people have said the center will cost too much money. The town council is going to look at the building plans again. They will think about how they can cut costs. So what is the compromise that they're going to have to make? They can't spend as much money, so instead they're going to have to cut some costs. Maybe not build an extra building, or use materials that are more expensive, or make it a little bit smaller. So she had to learn what the word compromises were because, was, is, because that's what's going on in her plan for the community center. Very good. So we're going to get back to our focus of the day, which is cause and effect. Cause and effect. All right. I'm going to make my screen bigger great listening and reading today and we're going to pull some cause and effect out of our story so i made my chart here cause and effect all right now what is one thing that happened in this story and then i want to know what made it happen okay so let's talk about our friend okay this little girl in the story she really wanted what somewhere to play basketball, okay? She wanted to play basketball. What effect did that have? What idea popped into Mr. Moretti and the little girl's head after he saw her wanting to play basketball so bad. Yeah, she decided to try to make the community center, right? 
make a community center. And it wasn't just her, it was her entire neighborhood. Everybody had ideas just like this. Mr. Moretti, his cause was he wanted cooking classes. A fact, they worked together to try to make a community center. Okay. There's another cause and effect you can pull out of the story. Something that happened and why it happened. Let's think about the money. They started to talk about how things got too expensive, right? Hmm. So cause things got too expensive. Should I write back? Building the community center got expensive. I'm going to put building the center became expensive. What effect did that have? Was it just expensive and everybody ignored it? Building the center became expensive. What effect did that have? Did we just leave it alone and say, oh, it's expensive, too bad? No, what did they do? The effect was they had to cut costs, right? So they, the community, I forgot my capital T, the community leaders had to cut costs. And remember we discussed that might mean making something smaller or leaving something out. Good, so we have a pretty good cause and effect list here. So the first cause, she wanted to play basketball. A fact, she decided to make, to try to make a community center with her community. Next, building the center became expensive, that's our cause. The effect, the community leaders had to cut costs. Good, nice work. So, go ahead and grab those skills practice books. We're going to put this reading scale to use today. So go ahead and get your orange books, and we're going to open to page 145. 145. So, once you get your book, pause the video right now if you need to take time to get your book. Once you get your book, you are going to put your finger in your gray box. And our focus today is, of course, cause and effect, which we've been doing all day. What makes an event happen is called the cause. The event that happens is the effect. We already knew that, right? So, you're going to practice. You are going to read each effect and circle the best cause, either A or B. So they're going to give you the effect, and you choose what caused it. Okay. So let's look at number one together. Kylie was cold and wet. You have two options here. A, what caused her to be cold and wet? She stayed out indoors and read a book. I don't know if that would make me cold or wet. Or B, she played outside in the snow. I think we know which answer is better. B, if you are outside in the snow, you're probably going to come inside and you might be cold and wet. So you're going to circle B. Now make sure before you circle your answer, boys and girls, you are reading both options. Just like when we take our computer test, we never choose one unless we've chosen all of our answers first, or read all of our options first, because there might be one that's a little bit better. So don't let them trick you. When you're done with that page, you're going to turn it, and you're going to match here. You're going to read each cause, and you write the letter of the fact that matches it. So now they're giving you the cause. Okay. So, number five, we have to write the phone rang. The boy fell down. She ate too many cookies. I've been doing that a lot. The sun came up. Lee drank all the milk. 
the weather got warmer. So those are all of our causes. Our letters are our effects, okay? So you're going to read your cause and then read down your effects to find which one. So let's focus on the phone ringing first. Let's read our effects. She had a stomach ache. Would that be why the phone rang? Our snowman melted. I don't think so. Dad answered it. Hmm, I think I like that answer, but let's keep reading to make sure. Mia had to drink orange juice. He scraped his knee. The rooster crowed. Which one do you think would match the cause, the phone ring? Why the phone ring? So the cause, the phone ring, the effect, what happened? Dad answered it. So I think I'm going to write C. The phone ring, Dad answered it. So I put C. And because I've already used that one, I can gently cross it out so I know I don't use it again. All right. Very good. Nice work, boys and girls. So that is your job today. I'm going to link below your pages. And of course, I'm going to link below another fun video you can watch about cause and effect. Kind of get that a little bit deeper. So make sure you take the time to watch that today. All right. I hope you have a wonderful April Fool's Day. Don't play any too crazy of pranks, okay? Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Get all of your work done. Do some extra reading. And I will talk to you tomorrow.